Hello everybody and welcome to our first exercise in module 12-3. Now we're going to be looking at how to perform tests for the goodness of fit, in this case for a multinomial distribution. Now what does that all mean? Well, here what we're going to do is start again with some assumption, some null hypothesis that states that our data fits or is described by or follows a specific distribution, in this case, a specific multinomial distribution. Then we're going to go through a very familiar calculation, set of calculations really, to determine whether or not we have evidence to support an alternative which says, no, that is not the appropriate distribution. Our data follows something different. So let's get into this exercise and you'll see plenty of similarities here if you've looked at the preceding videos in, in module 12. Monopolistically competitive markets are defined by the degree of product differentiation between competing firms. Firms with products that are in the minds of consumers, not close substitutes, have greater ability to price their products above marginal costs. Suppose a market consists of four firms. Now, of course, yes, four firms. The economists that are watching this, yeah, it's a little bit more oligopolistic, but that's beside the point. Over the past five years, their market shares have stabilized to those shown in the table below. So here I have these historical market shares. In January of this year, H2O, H2 Osprey introduced a new product. Perform the appropriate test to determine if this new product has changed the distribution of market shares between these four firms. So we have some historical market shares based on historical data. Now that H2 Osprey has introduced a new product, now we want to see, do we have evidence to show that that has changed the distribution of revenues amongst these four firms? So the null hypothesis here is really going to be somewhat pessimistic. No, it has not had any impact. Our null hypothesis, if I can squeeze it in here, is that those proportions, so the probability for Aquabear is 0.33, the probability for Waterdog is 0.25. I'm saying probability, that's not right. The proportion for Waterbear or the market share is 0.25. For H2 Osprey is 0.21, and for Rainy Cat is also 0.21. So the null hypothesis here is saying that multinomial distribution has not changed. Those market shares has not changed. The alternative is that, yes, it no longer follows that same multinomial distribution. So here I will have the probabilities, I keep saying probabilities, my goodness, proportions are not, and I'm going to list them all off again, PA, PW, PH, and PR. There's a little typo right there. Too many zeros. Okay, so either the proportions are equal to what we already have in that historical data, or the alternative, they're no longer, it no longer follows that multinomial distribution. So we're going to do this test at the 10% level of significance. Now, Here's where you will see the similarities because now once again, we are comparing our observed frequency with what we expect it to be if the null is true. Sound familiar? If those differences are small, 
then that results in a small test statistic, which again is going to be a chi-squared test statistic. If those differences are large, if there's a big difference between what we observe in reality and what we expect to observe if the null is true, if there's a big difference, then that's going to give us a big chi-squared. That's going to result in that chi-squared falling on the upper tail of that distribution, which is where our rejection region is. So again, we're doing a upper tail chi-squared test, despite the fact that when you look at this null and alternative, you see these equalities, right away you think, oh, it must be a two-tail test because, you know, when I see equality, that's what I think. This is still an upper tail chi-squared test. We are still going to be building the components for this somewhat tedious to calculate test statistic where we look at the difference between our observed values, our expected values, we square those and add them up, and those are all divided by the expected value. Same, same calculation as we've seen before. So let's get through this and uh, you'll surely you'll feel like second nature to you because you've done so many of these types of problems now. So the first thing that we need are the expected frequencies. So here we have all of the relevant proportions. So if the null is true, well then what we would expect is for those proportions to be the same as they were before the introduction of this new product. So total revenues for all of the firms were $300, $300, hundred million, whatever you want it to be. If the null hypothesis is true, well then 0.33 or 33% of that is what Aquabear would have acquired. So 0.33 times 300. So our expected value there would be $99. For Water Dog, if the null hypothesis holds, well, they would get a quarter of that, and so that would be $75. For Osprey, H2 Osprey, they would get 21% of that, so that expected value is 63. And same for Rainy Cat, they would also have $63. So, from there, it's the same calculation. I'm looking at my observed frequencies, my expected, then we square those differences, then we divide those differences by that expected value, then we add those up, and that gives us our upper tail chi-squared test statistic. So now I'm looking at the differences between these values. So we start with a 90 minus 99, oops, is minus 9. That squared is 81. 81 divided by our expected value of 99 gives me point. 818. Next one, 63 minus 75 minus 12 squared divided by that expected value 75, 192. Next one, 78 minus 63, 15. 15 squared, 225 divided by that expected value, 3.57. And the next one, I'm just gonna run out of room, 69 minus 63, whoops, is six, six squared, 36, divided by 63, 0 0.571. Now we can add those up, 355, 192, and 818, 
that gives me finally my chi squared of 686. So not as tedious as some of the other calculations that we've done for chi squared, but very, very familiar, I suspect you can see. So degrees of freedom, it's exactly what you're gonna guess. This is gonna be k minus one. K is the number of categories that we have. And this time, I have four categories. So here are degrees of freedom, four minus one, we have three degrees of freedom. We're doing this at the 10% level of significance. So let's go down to our chi-square distribution. And here I have three degrees of freedom. My test statistic is out here between these two values. There's that alpha. So I have a chi-square distribution with a critical value here, 6.251. That defines my rejection and my do not reject because again, this is an upper tail chi-square test. Are those differences between what I observe and what I would expect if the null is true? Are those differences large because that would support the alternative or small? That would support the null. That would support that my assumption that the null is true is valid. So here we're looking to see, do I have evidence to show that those differences are large? So it's an upper tail chi-square. I have uh, this area here, of course, is equal to 0.1. Now our test statistic was 6.86. So this area here, the blue area, certainly it's less than 0.1. And I can see here, not only is it less than 0.1, but it's a little bigger than 0.05. So my test statistic here, or my, my result, my p-value is less than 0.1, greater than 0.05. Using either approach, p-value, critical value approach, we should always get to the same conclusion we have sufficient evidence here to reject the null hypotheses. What does that mean? The introduction of this new product has in fact changed that distribution of market shares among these four firms. Now, that's all that we need for this problem. We've gone through everything. Our interpretation here is, of course, that the introduction of this new product has changed. It has influenced the distribution of market shares between these four firms. Now, similarly to what we did with the previous exercises when we were looking at those tests for independence, something else that we can do now is to do a graphical representation of the data to give us some idea of how that distribution has changed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a bar chart and I'm going to compare market shares, both the historical market share with now the current or the after the product introduction market share. And maybe that will give us some idea of how those proportions have changed. So I'm just going to clear away some of this some of this mess. Let's make some room here. And now let's do a quick little bar chart. We need a couple of calculations because here I've already got my proportions, the historical proportions, but now let's calculate the post product introduction proportion. So that's going to be 900 divided by 300. 900, oh, 90, not 900, 90 over 300. So that gives me here a point estimate of 0 0.3, 63 out of 300. This is 0 0.21, 78 of 300 is 0 0.26, 69 of 300 
is 0.23. So even looking at these numbers, it's maybe straightforward to see how things have changed. We're going to draw a bar chart anyways, just so that we can really see it. And it's not going to be precise. Again, this is just to give us some idea if, you know, some idea of how those proportions have, have been influenced. So first, let's look at those historical values. So for aqua bear, let's say here's 33%. This is for aqua bear. For water dog, they were at 25%, so a little bit less, maybe down here. H2 Osprey was at 21, so a little bit less again. And Rainy Cat was exactly the same there as Osprey, so put them also at 0.21. Now, so this is historical. Now let's look at current. So using these values, well now I can see Aqua Bear fell. They fell to 30%. So something like this. Water Dog, they fell a little bit as well. 0.21. H2 Osprey, well they went up. And they're even higher than what Water Dog started at. So let's draw them something like this. And Rainy Cat, they're up just a little bit to 0.23. So this just gives us an easy way to really see how those distributions have changed. So it looks like by introducing that new product, H2 Osprey has successfully taken market share away from both Aqua Bear and Water Dog. But it looks like Rainy Cat has also benefited from the introduction of that new product. So maybe there's some relationship between those products, or maybe there's some similarity between that new product and something that Rainy Cat was already offering. So when H2 Osprey started to market, and, and advertise for their product, somehow that looks like it also benefited Rainy Cat. So both Osprey and Rainy Cat benefited at the expense of Aqua Bear and Water Dog. Okay, so that's it for our first exercise on multinomial goodness of fit tests. We are only going to do one more of these because they're very similar to the types of problems that you've seen and in previous sections of module 12. So we'll just do two of these. We'll do one more and we'll go through it fairly quickly, I think. Okay, thank you for watching everybody. Bye-bye.